Akbar. Allah grant us goodness and understanding. In Islam, you marry, mashallah, the idea is to live forever. If something goes wrong, you try to resolve the matter. If you still cannot, you involve elders. When you involve elder people, you don't always have your way. You allow them to dictate to you how to resolve the matter. One of the reasons why our problems are not being solved, when we involve parties, we just make them a representative for us. That's it. Which means you go and fight my case. Like they are your lawyer going to the other party and fighting your case. No. Those must get together. They must decide the solution. They come to you and impose it on you and tell you this is the solution. You go by it. That's when the marriage works. So in this particular case, they were so happy. They knew that if this man says something, there has to be some reason behind it. And so did Ismail alayhi salam. He did not just follow his father for no reason. He knew that this is my father. He is a saint. He is a Nabi. And if a Nabi instructs me, there is nothing I can do. There you are. So any one of us instructed by a Nabi? The answer is no. So don't end up divorcing your wives just because this man told you and that one told you, no matter who they are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to solve our matters. This is an eve in the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah, Ya Allah, help those who are going through marital turbulence solve their problems and crises. And help those who are living in bliss to live in even greater, even greater bliss. Help those who are not married to find spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. MashaAllah. So he, Ibrahim alayhi salam went away and time continued. This man was married again to another woman from the same tribe and he lived. After some time, Ibrahim alayhi salam came back. Exactly the same thing. He knocked the door, the door was opened and a woman had asked him or he asked this woman after greeting her that, you know, how is your condition? What is happening here? And so on. And she said, no, Alhamdulillah. She didn't talk excessive talking with him. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah on all conditions. That's it. And we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the correct quality of a wife. Don't complain to third parties. Don't even talk to them details. If you tell someone the goodness you are in, they might become jealous of you. If you describe to someone what bliss you are in, they might envy you. They might plan your destruction. Shaitan might come to them and make them become so jealous of you. So don't just say Alhamdulillah. If you have a crisis or two also, there are people whom you will tell them, yeah, I had a fight last night. And what will happen? For three years, they will continue telling people, these two are on the rocks. <laughs> on the rocks. And you solve your problem the very next day. And then she will tell you after you manage to find the source of the rumor, that, but didn't you tell me you had a problem? Well, that was one issue we had the other night. I cleared my throat and he woke up from his sleep and that's it. All I did is I made sure he went to sleep again and we, our problem was solved. So this is why we need to be intelligent. We need to make sure, don't discuss your matters with anyone, no one. Make sure they are extremely genuine and it is necessary for you to tell them, then you tell them. Otherwise, neither good nor bad. Have a habit of saying, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Wa na'udhu billahi min hali ahli nar we thank Allah on every condition and we seek His protection from the condition of those who are going to be cast in the fire. That's what we should be saying all the time. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at this woman and he tells her, give him my regards, pass him my salam and tell him he should maintain the threshold. He should maintain the doorstep. Allahu Akbar. So when Ismail alayhi salam came back, he felt that his father was there. He asked, what did anyone visit? She said, yes. She described the man. But this time, when he asked, what did he say? She said, well, he said, I should give you salam and you should maintain your threshold, meaning the doorstep, keep it. So he said, that was my father telling me to keep you as a wife. You're a good woman. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the coolness of our eyes in our families, our offspring, in our parents and our family members. And may he make us united as a Muslim ummah. So that is an interesting story that also occurred and we learnt a few lessons from it from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Then we have the dua that Ibrahim alayhi salam made when you find it and you read it in the Quran, it is amazing. Look, he surrendered to Allah every single time and he used to make dua. We read yesterday 
that Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he was building the Kaaba, he was saying, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. One of the duas, O oh Allah, accept it from us, from the two of us. You are indeed all hearing, all knowing. And he also continued saying, Rabbana waja'alna muslimayn ilak, O oh Allah, make us from amongst those who surrendered to you at all times. Make the two of us those who surrender to your command at every time. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لك. And from our progeny, from our offspring, make a nation that will be surrendering to you, Ya Allah. Then he made a very important dua. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا What is the meaning of أَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا? Show us how you want to be worshipped, Ya Allah. Through revelation, show us how you want to be worshipped. You've instructed me to build the house. You've done this. There's the rock here that is Hajar Aswad. There is the maqam here that is there. And th there is so much that you've asked me to do, Ya Allah. You tell me how do you want me to worship you. Arina manasikana. Show us the way of worshipping you. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا and forgive us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ You are most forgiving, most merciful. From this we learn that all acts of worship are prohibited besides those which are taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the law of the sharia. All ibadat, anything that you want to consider an act of worship will not be an act of worship unless it was specifically revealed and sent down. Why? Because even Ibrahim alayhi salam knew that we cannot worship Allah how we want, in a way that suits us. We have to worship Allah how He dictates. We have to do it how He wants. So He will tell us, Fajr, this time, this many rak'ah, this is what you will read and this is what will happen. And you need to be in this condition of wudu, and this is what wudu means, and this is what ghusl means. And dhuhr, this is what it means. And this, this is what it means. And so on. And you will do this and do that. So Allah showed Ibrahim alayhi salam a way. Allah revealed to him a certain act of worship. What was that? Allah tells Ibrahim alayhi salam, Announce the pilgrimage. I want everyone to follow your footsteps. Announce the pilgrimage in the people. Tell them they have to come to this sacred place. And this is what they will do. And Allah taught him the pilgrimage. What to do? And you will find they will come on every lean camel, from every valley, and from very, very far away, they will all come. Ibrahim alayhi salam, no loud hailer to begin with. Forget about the internet and the telephone and so on, and television and what have you, all this media, nothing, no newspaper. He was in a valley, all alone, with a few people, a little community. He had just built the house of Allah, and Allah tells him, just get up and make an announcement. You don't worry, it's up to us to carry that. To this day, it is impossible to cater for the number of people who want to go for hajj, to the degree that there has to be a quota in place. Imagine only two to three million can go for Hajj. That is the Hajj that was announced by whom? Begin with Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they did Hajj from that time. Although later on, they had changed some of the items and they had put idols and they had done this and they had engaged in shirkiyat and they started doing what Allah did not reveal. As Allah says, مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانِ Allah did not reveal any authority for them to, to engage in those acts of worship that He did not send down. But when Ibrahim alayhi salam called, the people began to come. Such that today we taste the fruit of this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us. When we speak of quotas, we all know that on the globe, close on to 2 billion Muslims. Close on to 2 billion Muslims. From them, only 2 to 3 million can make hajj at any given time. For now at least. Although they are trying to expand. But... How many want to go? I would like to think maybe two to three hundred million might want to go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. This is called acceptance of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah loved him so much. Allah told him, don't worry, 
everything will happen now. You just make the call and continue. This is why we learn from this. Totally different example. When you do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't worry how many people are sitting in your program. Don't worry if people are blocking others from coming to the program. Don't worry if anything negative is happening. For as long as you are sincere, Allah knows those whom He has chosen will benefit from what He wants them to benefit from. So even if there's one person in front of you, it is more than enough. It will continue. Allah will grant it continuation. And Allah will grant it growth. This is why Allah says regarding the kuffar, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْكَافِرُونَ They want to extinguish the nur of Allah with their mouths. Allah says Allah refuses but to complete the nur. The nur will definitely complete whether the disbelievers or whoever else wants to extinguish it, it will continue growing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us growth. Ibrahim alayhi salam announced the hajj and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him how to fulfill this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him how to worship him and this is why with us never engage in an act of worship that was not taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because if we do that we will have drifted from the millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam from the deen that Allah has asked us to follow Allah says I will show you how to worship me here it is this is why the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to sit with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you taught us this, now we'd like to know this and we'd like to know that and he would teach them. And as he taught them, they reenacted. And this is what was known as ibadah. So we should remember, any act of worship, it needs to be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it needs to be done exactly how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. And I like to tell people who ask questions, is this allowed? Is that allowed? Is this allowed? Look, there are thousands of things that are not disputed in the whole ummah, not disputed. Why don't we engage in all of those things that are not disputed before we enter territory where people might tell us, you're wrong. I, that's a very logical explanation, logical way of looking at things. I'd rather do the five salah, read the Qur'an, read the adhkar, do whatever I have to, do whatever the whole ummah agrees with my psalm, with my zakah, with my hajj and what have you, the whole ummah agrees. I will not have enough time to enter territory where people are telling me, brother, what you're doing is a bid'ah. I won't even have time because I'm so occupied with that which is confirmed correct that I don't have any other time. But when we start engaging, in things that are disputed, things that people will debate with us about and so on. What will happen? We will occupy our time with that which is less important. It's like they say when there is a pot and you have rocks, you have sand and you have stones. What do you put first? If you put the sand first, you're not going to get the rocks in. But you put the rocks in, then you put in the stones and shake it a bit. They'll find their way in the gaps. Then you put in the sand and shake it a bit more. Everything fits in the pot. So the same way we all have a capacity. If you are filling your capacity with that which is disputed, you're not going to have the chance to fulfill that which is not disputed. Common logic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding as He granted Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and his offspring. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the books that He revealed to Ibrahim. We know that there are some books revealed to Musa, the Torah. And the books revealed to Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah speaks about them and calls them Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa, the books or the Suhuf, a Sahifa, the parchments, the scrolls, the revelations that were given to Ibrahim and to Moses, to Abraham and Moses, may peace be upon them both and all the Anbiya. Now we don't have that scripture with us, but the Quran makes mention of some of what it contained. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'la, one of the things that is mentioned in the book given to Ibrahim, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Behold, you are giving preference to this world, yet the life after death is better and it is everlasting. This Allah says we wrote it in the book that we gave Ibrahim. And it's repeated for us in the Qur'an. Amazing. So we do know there was a book and we also have some of what was written. There is much more than this which is mentioned in the Quran. I've only given an example. Another very interesting point. Who is the one who gave us the name Muslim? What is the meaning of the term Muslim? We spoke about it. It is 
a submitter, one who submits. Who gave us this name? It was Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah says in the Quran, Millata abikum Ibrahim, huwa sammakum al